Man, oh man. I used to think, you know, seven, eight, nine years ago that raw was really bad. And a lot of times it was, generally. You would have these pockets, moments of time, where you'd have a good show or a good few weeks. But in general, raw was still pretty bad. Am I right? But when you look at what's happened even just over the past few years, like, I think it is safe to say, and it's not hyperbole to say so, it's not recency bias, it's not overreaction, it's not any of that. I think it is very fair to say that this is the worst, the worst, the absolute worst that Monday Night Raw has ever, ever, Ben. Unbelievable. And if you agree with me on that assessment alone, you should smash that subscribe button and follow the show on Twitter. So that way we can join in railing and ranting against Monday Night Raw. I mean, it has to be. Like, you used to get a lot of shit or grief if you would go to Twitter, go on, come on YouTube here, and talk about how something was bad on Raw or how Raw was a bad show. You would have those that would defend it, those that had a different perspective, those that truly enjoyed it. It's really hard to even find those folks anymore. They've either been so disenfranchised and so turned off by the product that they don't watch anymore, or in some cases even worse, they've been converted to the negative Nancy crowd that they used to rail against. Like, that's how bad this is. I cannot imagine for the life of me, unless you are a little kid who doesn't know any better, a dopey adult who was dumb as a kid and is still dumb as a box of rocks now, or you have absolutely zero standards about anything pertaining to professional wrestling, how across the board anybody could look at what they see every week on Raw and think this is good, that this is any good at all, that in any way, shape, or form, this is what it's supposed to be. This is how it's supposed to be, because it's not. It's not good. It's horrible. It's a joke. It's an embarrassment. I mean, and, and the old answers you used to get, the old defenses you used to get, well, if you don't like it, don't watch. Well, that's the problem. More and more every week, fewer and fewer people are watching. Like a few weeks ago, you got down to 1.5 million viewers. You probably looked throughout the history of the old Off the Rope Show channel, this Otero Central channel, and find me talking about different times saying, hey, we're at 4 million viewers. What happens when it gets down to 3.5? What happens now it's 3.5? What happens when it gets down to 3? Oh my God, 2.5 million viewers. What a disaster. 2 million viewers. How much lower can you go? This has to be the floor. And yet every single time you turn around, they continue to astound you with their ability to achieve the exceptional of suck. Now, you can make all the defenses and excuses of the world. Well, the TV world has changed and people have cut the cords and you have so much more competition out there. That is absolutely no excuse. Let me be clear here. That is absolutely no excuse for the drop in viewership we have seen in Raw over the past decade plus and the damn near falling off the cliff that we're seeing now. You can't even just sit there and say, blame football season. All that happens every year is once football, Monday Night Football stops, You'll see a slight uptick in the ratings for a little bit, but every year the baseline gets set lower and lower. So again, you fail on that defense. Like, how could Raw be this bad? Like, I did sit down to watch it again for the second week in a row last night. I don't know why I would do that. Because I even took to Twitter and asked you guys to, you know, vote on it, retweet, to make me suffer and not only have to watch, but review. But I didn't even get enough people to care enough to hate on me, to retweet it, to force me to watch a review. Either way, I'm like, hey, now I heard something about God's going to be on the show. I got to at least watch that because it's breakfast club business. It doesn't matter if it's best for business or not. This is breakfast club stuff and it's God, Doug, himself. But I didn't even make it through halfway through the show before I fell asleep. I didn't even make it halfway through. And it was not like I could kick on the national championship game and find that any more interesting. As I fell asleep on Raw at about probably 9.30ish, 9.45ish, I don't even really remember. I woke up for a brief moment in time, probably somewhere around 10.30, and fell asleep again. Like, that's how bad this has gotten. It's not just because I'm becoming an old man. 
It's not. I don't have any problems staying awake for AW Dynamite, even on its boring or bad weeks. We'll never get to this standpoint. Same thing with Friday Night SmackDown. How could a company set out to produce such consistently bad and awful television? And I know the ultimate fall guy here, because it's how it should be, is Vincent K. McMahon. He's the one that oversees everything. He's the one that micromanages everything to death. He's the one that nobody knows from moment to the next what the fuck he wants, what the fuck he's looking for, or what the fuck he's even doing or trying to accomplish. And I understand in that type of environment, it can be incredibly difficult to succeed. And in some ways, it doesn't matter what the wrestlers do. It doesn't matter what the creative team does. It doesn't matter what the fans' perspective is or anything like that. Vince is ultimately doing these things because he thinks it's what's best and nobody likes this stuff and nobody has the balls and courage to stand up to him and tell him, you suck and your product sucks. Furthermore, and I'm talking not necessarily USA because I'm sure they're telling him they paid one price for one rating and are getting something entirely different. It's the people that he surrounded himself with, the yes men culture, the infrastructure around him that's afraid of him, that walks around on eggshells, that doesn't know how to sit there and tell him, dude, this sucks. And more than that, it's a joke and you should be ashamed and embarrassed of yourself for what the hell you put out there on a week in, week out basis. How the hell can you sit there and look at yourself in the mirror and think that this is a good thing that you're doing every week? Even when your creative team comes up with a script for Raw, you tear it up, put it in the f fucking dumpster, and then you create your own special dumpster fire. But as much as you want to blame Vince, because at the end of the day, he's made it about him, and it's all about him, the problems go much deeper. Much, much deeper than just Vince. I know some of you are going to blame the three hours. Hey, you know what? Two hours would be better than three, but two hours of shit is still two hours of shit. It's just not three hours of shit. So length of time alone is not an excuse. You have enough roster, you have enough infrastructure, you could be better. I don't buy or allow that it's too long three hour excuse. Yes, ideally I would love it to only be two hours. That's the way it should be, but that's not the reality. So you have to adjust and make do with the reality that you have. And if the reality is it's three hours every damn week, then do better with the three hours that you have. Christ. The PG rating. That's a piss poor excuse. There is nothing about PG that says that you can't create interesting, compelling characters or interesting, compelling stories. PG maybe restricts some of the things that you could do, but if you can't even get to the point where that rating is going to have an impact, then what the hell difference does it make? A week in, week out when you watch Raw, I guarantee you, you're never really crossing that threshold. Right? Am I right? So that's not an excuse. And even the part about Vince. That's not an excuse either because you have other folks. The creative team, on the one hand, some of you want to blame the creative team. Well, on the on one factor, the, no matter what the creative team does, it doesn't matter because if Vince doesn't like it, he's just going to tear it up any freaking ways. Right? So what the hell difference does it make? But then you can sit there and say, well, what if the creative team provided him better stuff? Maybe he wouldn't have to do some of that. Maybe it wouldn't be so bad. And maybe you're right about that. Like it's a sucky environment to be in, but if they stop presenting shit, maybe it won't lead to us getting even worse shit on the flip side, right? All right, so they're accountable. For those of you that live in this fantasy la-la world that God and Stephanie being in charge is going to change anything, have you seen NXT? That indicatoring flippy fuck fest that can't even beat Dynamite. Whereas WWE has infinitely more resources, they have two national primetime wrestling show platforms that they could use to prop up and promote their third on Wednesday night, and they can't even beat Dynamite! They can't even get to a million viewers consistently! But somehow, some way, the person, specifically Hunter, that oversees that, you now trust to run the entire operation? Excuse me? How the hell does that work? How the hell does that make any sense whatsoever? And as far as the Stephanie piece, she'd be nothing more than a figurehead CEO and that's all the hell you would want her to be. 
Because correct me if I'm wrong here, but she's the one that oversaw the change in philosophy and structure of the creative team over the past decade and a half that led to all the crappy-ass comedians and soap opera writers and movie writers, script writers, that don't know how the hell to write professional wrestling that entertains people. And you want her to oversee the entire company? This is one of the examples of the grass is greener on the other side until you realize it's fertilized with the same manure. Yeah, Vince dies or goes away or is forced out. Then what the hell happens? Newsflash, Hunter and Stephanie are still highly involved now and you're still seeing this crap on Raw every week. What the hell is going to be the difference? And as much as everybody likes to make the excuses about the creative team, or they want to make excuses about Vince and dot, 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 it comes down to the wrestlers too. Like these wrestlers on Raw stink. Who the hell would want to watch them? There's hardly anybody that does anything that's new. Hardly anybody that does anything that's unique. They all pretty much work the same type of flippy fuck style at this point. Everybody does the same moves, everybody walks, talks, acts, works the same, so nobody stands out, it's all a schmaz of vanilla mayonnaise suck. And at some point in time, you gotta stop blaming just Vince or just the creative team, because that's a cop-out too. If these wrestlers were more talented, if these wrestlers that came up throughout the scene of wrestling over the years learned how to do anything, then bump the hell around and hurt themselves for real when they're supposed to make it look real but it'd actually be fake, maybe we wouldn't be in these spots. Maybe these guys could ad lib better or at least deliver the bad written material in a more effective and entertaining way. Like you could go throughout the Raw roster and you say, Bland, 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 male, bland, female, bland, 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 all around, bland, bland, bland. And this is also a part of the environment that's been created throughout professional wrestling over the past decade plus as the internet's become a bigger thing and people like Meltzer Magoo have had a much stronger stranglehold on the hardcore aspects of professional wrestling. Now you've got all the marks getting into the business so they don't know how to be performers. They don't know how to entertain people in real meaningful ways that emotionally connect with the audience because they think all they can do is crash test dummy flip fuck around in order to get a cheap pop. And if anything, this Thunderdome experience has only heightened how much that really matters. Because now, no matter how much fake noise you pump in, it doesn't matter. And you can sit there and blame, by the way, the Thunderdome too. Well, we don't have fans, the fans go, how many times you watch Raw in recent months or even recent years and the crowd's on their hands, sitting on their hands for 95% of the damn show anyway? What the hell difference does it make? Like, what are you going for here? Like, at least with SmackDown, to me it starts, you've got a top guy, you've got the tribal chief, the head of the table, Roman Reigns. And everything else falls in line afterwards. It doesn't fix everything, and it doesn't make things far from anything close to perfect. Far from it. But you have a vision, you have an idea of what you're trying to do. That's your guy, and he's executing what's given to him, and by God, he's making it work. On the flip side, Raw with Drew, I would say, what the hell are you trying to do with him? What are you trying to accomplish? Like, what are you building here? What's the identity of your show? Your show has no identity. Your champion has no identity because he's bland as shit. And it's not as easy as just taking the belt off of him and putting it on somebody else because nobody else on that damn show really has much in the way of personality outside of Bray Wyatt. And he can only go down that road but so many times. Like, how can it be so bad? How can these wrestlers on Raw suck so bad? How? And then the commentators. If the commentary team doesn't act like they want to be there, if they don't act like they care, then why should any of the fans want to be there? Why should any of the fans care? You were getting paid decent money. Who was it? Tom Phillips, Byron Saxon, and Samoa Joe? You three incompetent fucks. If you aren't bothered enough to care to emote even a little bit like I am, then you need to get the hell out of the way so we can find somebody else that can. As grating and as annoying as Mauro Ranallo was, at least you thought he cared. That mattered. That meant something. Because you're trying to emote and get the audience to get emotionally invested that is watching at home. 
when I watch Raw every week, the spare times that I do, I did it last week and watch it this week and it had been months before, but I come back and it's the same shit. These guys legitimately sound like they would be do, want to be doing anything else other than what the hell they're getting paid to do. So if that's the case, then facilitate their request and get them the hell off of commentary. And if they don't like it, then fire their ass. Like there's no personality. There's no life. Everything sounds so scripted and freaking all the matches look so bland and choreographed. All these random ass thrown together matches, all these repeat matches that you see week after week after week, you have absolutely no reason to feel like you miss anything if you don't watch the show live. That's the problem. That's the fundamental number one problem is you don't care whether you miss it or not because you don't care about the wrestlers. You don't care about the feuds. You don't care about the stories. Most of the people are exactly the same, so why the hell would you care about one of them any more than the other? They all blend together like a big tub of mayonnaise, and you just say, like a respectable person should, I'll pass on the mayo. Thank you. Like, what are you, what are you doing here? How could you sit there every week and write such a bad show? Now, some fans will sit there and say, well, I could write a better show, and, th and no, you can't. Because I've seen what some of y'all value in professional wrestling. You would create a crappy version of NXT. I promise you. I promise you. Like, it's bad enough that this Raw product has basically driven away all the casuals and all you mostly got left are the hardcore folks. So that ain't helping anything. Like, damn. Like, everybody should be ashamed. Everybody. Everybody. Like, the fans that continue to watch this week in, week out... Shame on you because you're contributing to the problem too. To all the wrestlers, boys and girls, that go out there and get over like a wet fart in church. Like, you know what? Be better at your fucking job. A little less time working at the performance center on your flips and your kicks and your movesets. And a little more time working on how to Get invested in the personality that you're supposed to be. Try to present yourself as a larger in life character. By God, every single moment that you get on television on a weekly basis, you maximize it and get the most out of it! To the people on the creative team, like, get a clue or get the hell out of the way. And let other people that know what the hell they're doing or at least would have a chance to have an idea of knowing what the hell they're doing before Vince would shoot it all down, Stand in your place. Because even if you said, like this week's Raw, that that three hours was actually produced by the creative team, there's nothing about that that suggests that professional writers actually did that. Or maybe it is, because it sucks just that badly. Like, that, that's, that's embarrassing. That's a joke. Like, for Hunter and Stephanie, like, are you okay with inheriting a shit show? Because that's what you're allowing to happen. Stop it. Vince, is this one of these situations that you don't care and you're going to run it into the ground before you die? Well, that that's great. That's your choice. I guess you've earned that right. But it sure would be nice if you got the fuck out of the way. Because at the end of the day, the buck stops with you. And beyond question, the number one single impediment to this product getting better is you! While the wrestlers change, the creative team changes, all these other factors change, what remains the same? It's you! Does nobody have the guts to stand up to you? Is everybody so worried about how you will react? Is that how you like having your people around you be walking around on eggshells? Because you're full of shit anyways, Vince. You'll sit there on the one hand and talk about how you like when people stand up to you. And on the other hand, no, you don't. You want everybody to be yes men and women. And they sit there walking around on eggshells and they got to be worried about how dealing with your ego. You're supposed to be a fucking billionaire. Act like it. Don't be such an insecure bitch pussy. And to the idiots in the comments that are going to sit there and say, oh, he's a billionaire. Okay, and what? How much richer could he be? You know what I mean? Like you're applauding somebody that should be worth 10 or 15 billion for being worth 1 or 2 billion? And what? Like a lot of you that are even going to comment that 
based off of your talents, your skills, and your abilities, are probably much closer to realizing your true net worth and value than Vince McMahon is. Just because he's doing it on a larger scale doesn't make him any better. In fact, it makes him worse because he's not maximizing his potential. He's not getting the most out of his company that he should. And I'm glad to see more and more people are taking him to task, taking the company to task, and taking this shitty Raw show every week to task because they should be. Because it's a blight on professional wrestling. It's a blight on sports entertainment. It's a blight on entertainment. Whatever the hell you want to talk about. And God knows with Vince, you got to watch out for the words that he doesn't want you to say because, again, he's focused on the wrong effing things. Who the hell cares what word you use, Vince, or what labels you want to throw at it, Vince, if fewer and fewer people are watching on a week-in, week-out basis? That would be one of those indications of ding dong, dumb dick, what in the bluest of blue fucks is going on here? I'm focusing on this stuff, and all the focus on this stuff is leading to a decreasing audience. I wonder what the problem is. It's you! It's a shame. Like, Raw used to be must see TV. Wrestling put Monday Night Football at risk back in the day. Raw used to be that thing that you were proud of watching. And you felt bad for those that used their own stereotypes about wrestling to excuse their not watching. You're like, well, shame on you. You're a fucking idiot. Well, who's the idiot now for watching this crap? Raw sucks. Frankly, while Vince is the head guy and a lot of that blame ultimately does fall on his shoulders, it's far from just him. It's a result of a lot of problems in a lot of areas. Up to and including the wrestlers, the fans, the internet, everything. Everyone's to blame. And I don't see how it's going to get better anytime soon.